Start by clicking New Dashboard on this dashboard page found under the Visualization section in the app. On this dashboard, I want to dive deep into my US sales team's deals. You might like to do a team sales activities overview, a customer retention dashboard, or a pipeline dashboard, to name just a few ideas. So here's where you'll give your dashboard a name and choose a theme style you'd like. Then decide whether you'd like your dashboard to be a standard one or dynamic. A dynamic one is a dashboard that automatically tailors the data shown to the team member that's viewing it. So for a team of 20 people where you want to show everyone their own KPI progress, instead of building 20 different dashboards, you make a single one and you can switch between an individual view and a team view with the click of a button. Finalize your access, edit permissions and time zone, and press save. Now you're ready to add your widgets, with different types to choose from here. What you choose will depend on how you'd like to see your KPIs and data displayed. You can also browse a range of ready-made widget templates that are created with a whole catalog of pre-built KPI formulas for you to use, and edit as much or as little as you desire. In this way, you can make your Plecto setup plug and play super customizable or a combination of both to suit your business goals. For the sake of simplicity and to get familiar with Plecto, I'm going to start by browsing the widget templates. To start with, I'd like to be able to see the top three employees who have brought in the highest value of New Deals 1. So I'm going to select this leaderboard widget template. I'll be greeted with this message. If you have used a formula that is needed for the widget before, simply select Use Existing. Otherwise, select Create New. I'll simply drag and drop the widget. And voila! The widget with the pre-filled formula has been added to the dashboard. I can now customize the formula by selecting the edit button here or change how I want the contents of the widget to be displayed. First, I'd like to shorten values. So instead of long numbers, it would just display as so. Then I only want the top three. So I set the number of items to display to three. And then if you see in the corner here, I have a summary of the total value of new deals. Press save, and there we go. Time for our next widget. Let's search in the templates again. Now I want to see the value of the whole team's one deals for this month, but on a daily basis. So I search and click the one that I'd like. For this one, we're doing a line chart. Let's compare it to one deals for the previous month, which I do so here. For our next widget, we're going to walk through what to do if you can't find what you're looking for as a completely ready-made widget template. I start by pressing add widget. I'm selecting this super nice speedometer as it's the best way to show my team's progress against their target. I drag and drop the widget and then click the new button here. From the drop down, I can either select create formula or browse templates. Now instead of browsing for a widget template, here I am browsing through formula templates. I'll select the one that I want and repeat the process as before. Under target value, I'll select static number where I can manually add a target. And just to make it even easier to see if we're on the right track, I'll add what we call conditional colors, and I'm going to customize them. So I can see very quickly, okay, we're in the yellow, we're doing all right, but maybe could push a little more to get to our target. For the next widget, I'm going to select column chart, drag and drop, and again, we won't search for a pre-made widget, but instead a pre-made formula. So we'll select new, and then browse templates in the add data section. We've seen the value of the team's deals for the past two months on our previous widget, 
Now I want to see how many new deals they've created over the course of the year to see if there's a pattern or somewhere we could improve. So I'll search and select the formula I want, select my data source and edit the filters. To see the deals made by month, I'll change group by, which is set to employees, to group by time. Repeating this same process for this widget, I'm creating a donut chart where I can see the number of meetings booked by each employee this month. And for the last widget, I'm going to use a table to visualize my employees' activities this month. So, starting fresh, I'll click on Add Column, and this time we're not going to add a new formula, but rather one that we've created before, which means it's in our library of existing formulas that I can search for in this drop-down. Now, as you can see, I have created many formulas already, but I'm going to use the same one that we used in the first leaderboard widget, because here I want to see all employees, not just the top three. And I'm going to do the same for the second column with the meetings booked formula that we used in the previous donut widget. Now, remember when we first created our dashboard that we could choose between a standard and a dynamic one? This is where this comes into action. When I click on this filter, I got the option to see data for individual employees or for the team as a whole. So let's say I want to see how Curtis Mill is performing and contributing to these team results. I can search and select him. Note that only with certain permissions can I view individual employees other than my own. You can read more about this in our very useful help center plus plenty of other helpful resources. Great job on building a dashboard together and see you in the next email to take your setup up a notch.